In October of 2009, a team of 14 MIT students and alumni ventured to Australia to compete in the 2009 World Solar Challenge, the world's longest race of solar-powered vehicles. Racing a car that they designed and built themselves, the MIT Solar Electric Vehicle Team came in second in their division for cars using silicon solar panels and fifth overall. Technology Review spoke about the race with team captain Alex Rambula, class of 2012, and with team member Chris Pentakoff, class of 2006, who is currently an engineer at iRobot and was a driver for MIT in the 2003 and 2005 World Solar Challenge races. In solar car racing, it's, it's all new terrain and it's a lot more about endurance and, and uh, adapting to kind of like real world conditions because you're not on a closed test track, you're on actual roads with other cars and that can give you a more you know real effect to it. Like you can get flat tires and you actually have to pull off the side of the road while other cars are whizzing by you. The name of the game is really efficiency and reliability are the two key factors that make a winning solar car. So as far as efficiency goes, it's going to be you know your aeronautical design it's going to be your solar array that make the difference. And then as on the part of reliability, um, I mean, your, your car, every minute that you waste on the side of the road, I mean, it can come down in minutes at the final, you know, coming down to the final um, lap on the racetrack. I think the, the most exciting part was um, on the last full day of racing, we, we were about fourth place, so we were actually at the top of the silicon class. And uh, Sunswift, which is an Australian team, was um, about an hour back. And then throughout the day, they just kept cre creeping closer and creeping closer and creeping closer. And so we finally got into um, a checkpoint, and we realized that we had a flat tire. And so we had to change that right away, but we couldn't actually do that by rules in the uh, pit stop. So what we had to do is we actually had to pull out of the pit stop by the side of the road and change it right when we got back out of the pit stop. Meanwhile, Sunswift is about maybe three or four minutes behind us and they want to pass us up. So we're madly trying to change this tire before they get out of the pit stop and pass us up. So it was, we're all set ready to go, the car comes out, we do our tire change and we do it in about two minutes flat and get out on the road. And throughout the rest of the day, they're tailing us for the next you know, two, three hours trying to get past us. But you know, those last couple minutes, just changing the tire was made the difference in holding them off for another you know, three, four hours throughout the day. You're so caught up in the moment you don't really have time to celebrate because all that's on your mind is, you know, the pounding adrenaline and just like, go, 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 and then you slam on the gas and you take off while the team is right behind you. Well, as far as bang for your buck goes, MIT is just, you get uh, the absolute most value out of the solar team. Um, we have a budget about one-tenth of that of the, you know, top-tier teams, but we still manage to perform extremely well and catch up to them in the top-tier rankings. So we're really proud of the, what we can do with the amount of resources that we do have. I mean, but most of the vehicles actually built in house. Um, I mean, the electronics were designed by you know, grad students, alumni of the team. Um, the aerodynamic design was done by an undergraduate, um, and so everything we do is designed in house. And there's some components that we do have to send out, such as like construction of the molds, the actual construction of the body. That all happens, you know, is done by students, designed by students, all in house. Like, it's pretty amazing for a team to do all of that. Yeah, because like we were saying, um, we have pretty much a tenth the budget of some of the bigger teams which get a lot of their stuff outsourced um, so we make up for it largely by you know our time so we put in the time to actually design and build our chassis completely and we do e virtually every aspect of making the body except for outsourcing for the molds we pretty much build the entire car ourselves as an aeronautical engineer, for me, one of the highlights was actually going to the wind tunnel. Was, uh, last January, during IEP, we uh, road trip out to Detroit with the car, um, and they basically donated an entire day's worth of wind tunnel time, which you may actually may think that's a lot of time, but that's not actually that much time to run a bunch of tests. We got a lot of useful data from that, and from that, we were able to optimize basically how the car would perform in various scenarios. You know, if the wind was blowing at a certain angle or maybe you had a tailwind, um, so it helped optimize our strategy for the race. Well, one of the great things about the Solar Team is that it, it's across a huge range of disciplines. I mean, students, you know, work in their own field as far as, you know, mechanical engineering, aeronautical engineering, electrical engineering, um, and so they learn, you know, hands-on skills, applications of this. Getting out of textbook is just not the same and that it'll never be the same. So actually having a hands-on project like that, it gives you the idea of what an actual project takes, and you can't get that in the classroom. 
Um, as far as the rest of the uh, the other side that's not engineering, it goes as far as management and fundraising. Those are skills that are absolutely useful in any discipline that you're going to go into in the future. But you're not taught that you know, at MIT or any other college if you're in an engineering degree. So those sort of things are something that you'll learn on Solar Team, but not elsewhere. Also, how to tie them all together, because you may learn a certain topic at MIT, but you don't necessarily know how it integrates with you know, something else, or like how the electronics fit with the aerodynamics or the, the chassis or? Uh, right now the current plan is to actually have a new car ready by 2011. It's actually a pretty short timeline um, from now until October 2011 when the race actually uh, occurs. Um, and so, you know, we'll be here this summer, a lot of us working on the next vehicle, um, and hopefully we'll start construction by about, you know, August. Um, we're looking at some pretty major uh, aerodynamic adjustments to the vehicle. Um, there, we want to you know, prototype some different ideas as far as um, the mechanical side goes, which uh, we're pretty excited to try out. Um, but it's definitely going to be the aerody aerodynamic side that makes the difference. Um, we're also investigating possibly getting a, a gallium arsenide array donated, which would actually make a huge difference in terms of the power output of the array, which would make us a lot more competitive on the field. So, um, you know, in the next couple months, we'll start seeing how these start shaping up. And uh, by the end of the summer, we'll definitely have a design ready to go and start construction. So we'll be back for WFC 2011 for sure.